What's going on everybody, C4 here, and welcome back to episode 15 of the San Antonio Marshalls Flashback Franchise as we are closing in on the conclusion of the offseason. We have the biggest part still to go, which is the draft, but we ended last episode with our free agency period as we take our 86 overall team, 87 offense, 89 defense. Quick refresher, we got Andre Johnson, Wes Walker, Reggie Bush, Darren Sproles, Vince Young, Greg Jennings. Uh, Evan Mathis, Jason Peters, and on the defensive side, we're bringing in Vince Wolfork, Osa Umanura, Jared Allen, Sheldon Brown, Asante Samuel, Kerry Rhodes, Daryl Smith, Jamie Shepard, Dave Polak, uh, just to name a few. But as we go into the free agency period, here are the targets that we identified at the end of the last episode. Dallas Clark at tight end, formerly of the Indianapolis Colts. We desperately need a big-time playmaker at tight end to come in. And Dallas Clark would be at the Gloveless Wonder. Uh, we threw back a, you know, an, eh, an uh offer to our former starting center, Steve McKinney. He is 31. He's an 85. We'll bring him back then probably at the end of next year. His rating probably won't be too much different than our backup center currently on roster, Amano. So, I mean, you know, we'll offer him a, an all right offer. But if we don't retain him, it's not that big of a deal. And then we're trying to look at two veterans to come in on the team. First up, we got Warren Sapp. On the defensive line and Zach Thomas formerly of the Miami Dolphins to come in and shore up our linebacking core let's see if we can land you know I would say you know three or four would be a very good return here for the Marshalls and then we'll get ready for the draft and we got three of four so far McKinney is still withholding but I mean we get new veterans and it's awesome that we we're able to bring in Dallas Clark one of the most underrated tight ends I think in the league's history and he's really got to open things up for this offense you know, we, we had Billy Miller, who's was good, but he wasn't Dallas Clark good. And look at that. Just like that, our team is already looking juiced to the gills, super stacked. Let's get into the draft. So a quick refresher of who are the familiar faces from this 2007 NFL draft. Just looking at the first round for now. You got Jamarcus Russell, Calvin Johnson, Megatron, Joe Thomas, LaRon Landry, Adrian Peterson, Ted Ginn, Patrick Willis, Marshawn Lynch, Revis Island himself, Darrell Revis, Brady Quinn, Dwayne Bowe, we got John Beeson, remember that seventh floor crew for Miami, Joe Staley, Greg Olson, um, you know, it was one of those things where we realistically were looking at a Greg Olson, you know, tight end type move, he was one of our more realistic picks, but if he was off the board, um, you know, it was a gamble. It was a gamble. We're either all in on Greg Olson or not. And the fact that we had Dallas Clark available in free agency kind of, you know, mitigates the risk that if Greg Olson isn't there, we're not kind of pigeonholed. We're not stuck with an, oh, no, what do we do? We're, we're going to be in a best player available situation. And, well, it would be nice if we somehow could find a way to trade up and get a Megatron, get a Joe Thomas, get Adrian Peterson. Uh, or a Pat Willis or a Marshawn Lynch. I mean, we might be. I mean, we might be around this range so we can get one of those guys if they slip just a little bit. But uh, let's be somewhat realistic. We're probably going to be picking for, you know, not some of the big name guys when it comes time for the Marshalls for their selection. Just as we get down the stretch, Greg Olson went off the board at pick 19 to the Chargers. So selecting Dallas Clark when we did, uh, it, it's it's very looking just like a tremendous pick. In hindsight, so here we are at pick 22. Um, you know, we still got running backs. We still got Adrian Peterson. We still got Marshawn Lynch. Uh, it's one of those things, right? Where where's our? Do we have a draft board here? We don't really. We have who we scout though. We scout. Um, we have Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush was very good last season. Big time upgrade at the running back spot. But when you look at the build of Reggie Bush, Reggie Bush isn't. The type of running back that's going to be able to get 20 carries a game and with a consistent level. He has had some fumble issues, so I think it would be a one-two punch with an Adrian Peterson. Reggie Bush could be what takes our team to the next level, at least looking within the draft right now. Um, you know, saying with the rule that we could select one round up, knowing the weaknesses of our team, it's really two picks. We either go and look at Eric Weddle at strong safety but our current strong safety is very good. He's like a 93, Anderson. Or we, we get Adrian Peterson. And I feel like having an elite running back tandem for the foreseeable future between Adrian Peterson. You have Adrian Peterson, first two downs. Third down running back will be Reggie Bush. That's going to be a lot of success for this team. 
And it's a luxury pick. It's a luxury pick, knowing that we don't really have any immediate weaknesses. Let's look at this right now. Let's let's truly identify what our biggest area of concern is. So, you know, everything looks good right now. Wide receiver, we're Gucci. Tight end, we're good. Offensive line, all these guys. Oh, actually, we got McKinney back. That's dope. I didn't even see that. Offensive line is all trending in the right direction. Defensive line, we had, you know, O.C. Manura. We could use a D-tackle, too. You know, we brought in Warren Sapp for a one-year beta, but we don't really have a foreseeable future um, D-tackle, too. Pollock still developed. We could look at a middle linebacker. Uh, middle middle linebacker. In, in looking at it right now, middle linebacker and D-tackle would be the two positions we realistically should try to target. And we look at middle linebacker, there's just nothing there. You have Justin Durant, you know, out of Hampton. He had an all right career with the Dallas Cowboys. Stuart Bradley was all right for the Philadelphia Eagles. There's just not a lot of, you know, really there. And in terms of guys that we can draft, I mean, Paul Pozlesny had a nice career, and we could easily slide him inside to middle linebacker. But he is projected to be, I mean, a really second-round pick. I mean, we could go after Paul Pozlesny and convert him. John Beeson, decent career. David Harris wasn't bad either. Um, what's David Harris? Is he a late second, mid second? We might have a chance to actually bring in a guy like David Harris and slide him inside. In terms of later round picks, not much there. And then when you look at D tackle, you have Adam Carricker, Alan Branch, Brandon Meebane. I mean, we actually could look at Brandon Meebane in the third round if he's still available. Late third round, maybe we overdraft him in the second. Uh, but other than that, man, it's just not. Let's not overthink it. Let's just not overthink it. We have Reggie Bush. We have Darren Sproles. We don't have a power back, which is exactly what Adrian Peterson is. So with that being said, pick 22 in the first round. The San Antonio Marshals select Adrian Peterson, running back from Oklahoma, 81, star dev. Good night. All right, looking into the second round of pick 22, there are two obvious selections we could make, but our offensive line is fine. Marshall Young is there. And then from the first round, oddly enough, I'm actually very surprised to see this. Joe Staley is still on the board. Jermarcus Ross is going to slip. Quarterbacks usually do slip in the draft. It is what it is. But Joe Staley is intriguing. But everyone on our offensive line, it's pretty much intact. And I, I really do want to get, maybe you know what? I haven't even looked at bigger defensive ends that we can move into D-tackle. Is there any of those guys available? I don't really think there is. Um, like none of these guys. Like Charles Johnson had a good career with the uh with the carolina panther but 270 is a little too light to uh make that transition inside ray mcdonald kind of a piece of garbage even though he went from florida uh got in some trouble with the uh, 49ers so that being said we're gonna overreach here and we're gonna select brandon mebane uh d tackle from cal in the second round he's coming in 76 quick dev 86 strength 82 block shed 82 power 80 tackling very nice safe pick for the marshals Okay, this is just staring me in the face. Joe Staley's still here in the third round. I don't even. We'll take it. We'll take a tackle. I, thanks. Don't know why you're slipping. We'll take you every goddamn day. So, getting a look at our draft recap, you did see the first three picks. First up, we got Adrian Peterson. Awesome. I can't wait. One of my favorite players. I have salted on him just a little bit with the off the field stuff. Um, you know, with the whole kid thing and stuff like that. And, you know, it's not as bad. I, we have to tier it. It's all bad. But obviously, when you look at someone more like Tyreek Hill, it's a little bit more, more extreme. But uh, either way, as far as on the field, he's one of my favorite running backs of all time. So I love having Adrian Peterson there. And really, now we have the complete backfield. We have the power of Adrian Peterson, who also is a freak athlete. We have Reggie Bush on third downs. We have Darren Sproles in case an injury throws up there. So we got lots of depth. We got Meebane, D-Tackle in the second round. He's going to be able to shadow behind Warren Sapp uh, and really develop and grow. Joe Staley, projected first rounder, kept slipping. He was still there in the third round. And, I, you know, we don't want to finesse every single pick, but you're still there in the third round. I'm going to take you and have you as depth somewhere. I mean, we, we need depth at left tackle. We need depth at right guard. Either one of those spots, Joe Staley can play. The visual of the draft, I'm pretty much... Gonna go with players with, with profile, like real pictures that were at positions we needed more depth at. So in the fourth round, we got Dante Rosario, tight end from Oregon. I think he spent some time with the Chargers. Uh, fifth round, we got Zach Dials, linebacker from K-State. I mean, you know, nothing. I'm not going to lie. I couldn't even tell you where this guy played, but he had a picture. Uh, sixth round, I got. we needed a punter. We didn't have a punter on roster. So I just went with the only punter that I heard of in Brandon Fields. And he actually comes in as a 75 overall. I know we spent some time with the Miami Dolphins. So I'll take that. And then the seventh round, I got 
maybe my most i made a tweet the other day about like what's an obscure player that's the first guy that comes to your head when you think of college football mine's jared zabransky from the best college football game i've ever seen boise state versus oklahoma in the fiesta bowl so maybe there's gonna be a little bit of tension between him and adrian peterson but the Statue of Liberty play, I mean, he was absolutely incredible. We needed a backup behind Mr. Vince Young, so I just feel, hey, you know what, why not? It was, it was between him or Troy Smith, and give me Jared Zabransky every day of the week. So let's, you know, getting a quick look at how the rest of the draft shaped up, what players went where. Megatron was the first overall pick to the Giants. Patrick Willis went to the Bengals. Joe Thomas to the Colts. Uh, Darrell Rebus, I, that's kind of weird, went to the, to the Jets there, but good for him. I like seeing that. Uh, LaRon Landry to the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Greg Olson went to the Chargers, as we saw. We got Adrian Peterson. John Beeson went to the Jaguars. Um, looks like we made the right pick, though, looking at these overalls. Beast Mode went to the Giants. Giants having one hell of a draft. Getting Megatron and Beast Mode in the same draft is pretty good. Paul Pozlesny. This was really the only other option. If we weren't going to go Adrian Peterson, Paul Pozlesny was going to be the selection. And You know, a 77 linebacker, what's his dev? Quick Dev, I mean, that wouldn't be a bad pick at all. I wouldn't be upset with that pick, but I think we made the right decision going with Adrian Peterson. Um, Eric Weddle could have been another potential. He's only a 76, probably star, though. Yeah, 76 star for Eric Weddle. Um, you know, it is. I'm happy with our draft, though. I'm happy with the way that our draft shaped up. Uh, wh who's the best player? What was this draft class? Calvin Johnson, 82. Eight, we got the second best player, and we got him at pick 22. So, uh, without a doubt, the best value in this draft you know what you know ben grubb's actually pretty good too so uh you know let's get into the next season let's get into the off season let's see how our team is going to shape up and get ready for week number one all right we're faced with a like third and three we're in the third preseason game we're going c4 special adrian peterson let's go oh let and he gets that fall forward that's the best animation in the game moves the chains for a young ap Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to run the ball 40 times a game. That's going to be our new game plan. Yeah, who says who says it's not going to work? And coach already said if if AP AD can get two touchdowns today's game, he'll give him number 28. That number 28 that AP wants so bad. You got to get two touchdowns. For right now, you got one. Because you got Reggie Bush out there. Seeing this another back-to-back years where we get first-round running backs. He said, I'm not losing my job. I'm going to bust off ridiculous spin moves and take this to the house to show you my value. All right. All right. Reggie Bush. He wants this. Right, we're trying to win this game. You guys are winning. The backups are in. No two touchdowns for Adrian Peterson to get back his number, but Reggie Bush got two. Maybe that'll be a sign of team building to say, count my touchdowns towards AP getting his number back. To build chemistry amongst the unit. But we're trying to win this one as he fires at the back of the end zone. This is actually, I didn't even put it in. This is going to be the second called back touchdown on this drive. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We literally have 10 seconds to try to run a play. I'm going to let Reggie Bush take it. I'm going to let Reggie... I feel like he's he got the determination level. This is going to be the final play of the game. Let's go, Reggie! Reggie Bush, beautiful. Third touchdown on the game as teams around the league are already just throwing their playbooks out defensively when, it, when they see the marshals for the upcoming regular season. You don't know how you're going to stop this. The triple option if we really want to. I don't even know if that's in the game. I'll find it. It's PC. I can hack anything I want. Reggie Bush, Adrian Peterson, you got Vince Young, you got Darren Sproles, you throw in Jared Zabransky. Yeah, no, no one can stop this team. 28 to 24. A nice little uh, final showcase in the preseason. Vince Young, uh, he did have an interception, which was annoying, but other than that, moved the ball well. Look at that rushing attack. Good, good luck. 10 carries, 69 yards, 2 touchdowns, Reggie Bush. 8 carries, 59 yards, 1 touchdown, Adrian Peterson. You look on the receptions, Reggie Bush had 52 yards. Adrian Peterson had 21 yards. So, <laughs> this is going to be fun. I've never played with an offense like this. and I might actually have to make the quarters a little bit longer so I can just really commit to running the ball. Uh, not much for sacks, not much for picks. But we got the dub 
as team, like I said, man, teams are just the DCs are pulling their hair out if they're not already bald. If they're bald, they're gonna be doing some sort of zombie-like shit and like digging into their skull, trying to figure out how they're gonna stop the rushing attack of the Marshals this upcoming season. So that is going to do it for the episode. We had a very fun draft. I hope you guys are excited about what the future entails for this running back trio. More so a duo, but you can't forget about Darren Sproles. I mean, there might be some people that say, hey, trade Reggie Bush, see if you can get better value elsewhere. There's other people that say, my God, this tandem is going to be very, very good. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to wait and see how this uh, decides to shape itself out. But I'm very optimistic that we're going to be able to get back into the playoffs um, you know, can we get to the playoffs? <laughs> that, that's that's actually probably the better question. Uh, we, we're 86 overall. We got 91 offense, 87 defense. We welcome Dallas Clark in this episode. And actually, what we're going to do is for sure go to the depth chart and at right tackle. We got to put in Andrew Wetworth. I think he still has his superstar dev trait. So that makes no sense at all why he's not even there. And then at right guard, we have Dealman, and we will make Joe Staley the backup. So there we go. We'll, we'll fix that. Now that the lineup is looking where I want it to be, um, in terms of new faces for this episode, as we get ready for the new season, like we said, we got Adrian Peterson. We brought in Dallas Clark. Then on the defensive side, we got Brandon Meebane, who's going to be learning behind Warren Sapp, one of the greatest to ever do it. Uh, we brought in Zach Thomas to be death behind Jamie Sharper. It's, uh, everything's going to be going right. Hopefully the sim... Helps our team out a little bit because last year, remember, we started out very, very hot. I was incredibly optimistic about us uh, getting in and having a very, very deep run in the playoffs. Didn't turn out that way, but, uh, you know, this year's better. This year, we're a stronger team, and hopefully Vince Young can take that next level in his career. He does have a quick dev, which is kind of annoying. The fact that he got Defensive Rookie of the Year last year. Does it still show that on his thing? Yes, it does. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Sorry, not defense. What am I talking about? Offensive Rookie of the Year and didn't get a dev trade boost to a star, which is really what you need for a quarterback to go off and start developing really, really nicely. Um, but optimism is high. Optimism is high around the entire camp. So we will have a quick turnaround. We'll be back in just a couple days for episode 16 of the Marshals, where we get through the first half of the 2007 NFL regular season. And I'm sure you guys are excited to see what the draft class is inhales and what our success is going to be early on with the brand new adrian peterson coming to the lineup already with an andre johnson here who is let's just let's just remind you even though he only has a quick dev he's the best wide receiver in the league but thank you for watching today's episode as always your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed and until next time it's c4 saying peace out Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping You talking that shit, well you talking and talking Look at my options, look at me dropping Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never Not me, not me, not never Not me, not me, not never I'm way too clever Look at